Hello and welcome, my name is Axel K and today we're taking a look at Quest Warrior. Quest Warrior is all about playing your pirates on curve in order to complete the quest Raid the Docks. After you've completed the three steps you will get rewarded with Captain Rukara that will summon the Juggernaut. At the beginning of your turn the Juggernaut will summon one pirate, deal two damage twice to random enemies and give you a random weapon. It can't be interacted with so it will stick on your board for the rest of the game giving you infinite value. For your mulligan you always keep the quest Raid the Docks, then you go for any one or two cost pirate and if you get one of these you can keep a three cost pirate to curve out. If you're on the coin you can keep two three cost pirates since you're going to be able to coin one out on turn two to get that quest tick. Significant cards to look for in the mulligan are Blood Sail Deckhand, Arbor Scamp, Defias Cannoneer and even Sword Eater if you curve out really well. If you're on the coin you can play quest on turn one and coin the Blood Sail Deckhand. Play a Scamp, Raider or Freebooter on turn two and then play the Defias Cannoneer on three. This will complete the quest and draw you the whetstone hatchet and since you played the deckhand before the weapon will be free and you're going to be able to swing right away to send off two cannon shots from the cannoneer. This deck is great for learning and practicing the fundamentals of hearthstone which are play on curve this means spend all your mana every turn for example you want to play two three cost minions together on turn six. An example of how this could be missed is if you have a hand that looks something like this on turn five and your opponent doesn't have any minions on board to activate your anchorman. It's easy to want to hold the anchorman for the value but you should play it anyway in order to fit the curve and to get the quest tick and set up for the two cargo guards on turn 6. This will give you more quest progression and a stronger board in the long run. And the next fundamental is, remove your opponent's tempo while developing your own. Play minions and make trades so that you end up with a bigger board than the opponents every turn. Good cards for doing this are, Defias Cannoneer pair with a weapon to shoot cannonballs at the opponent's minions, Sword Eater to get a powerful weapon to make trades with, and Stormwind Freebooter to get some attack to pick off enemy minions. And of course, keep an eye on your second quest completion since this will fire cannonballs just like the cannoneer would do. It's very tempting to send everything face with this deck but the juggernaut will give you infinite value in the mid and late game so it's better to focus on getting the quest completed. And a little bonus tip, save your Mr. Smite for when you have the juggernaut out since it will summon a weapon and a pirate which will get charged together with Mr. Smite. And then you can deal ridiculous amounts of face damage if you roll well. And that's it for quest warrior, play your pirates on curve, summon the juggernaut and end the game with some infinite value and tons of aggression. Thank you guys so much for watching, I know that this deck was a little more in depth about the fundamentals of the game, but I hope it will be useful for both new and old players who are looking to sharpen up their fundamentals a little. Thank you guys so much for all of the support, I'm having so much fun with the game right now and I'm just so excited to push out more content. So if you see anything you like, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, enjoy the games. Hello and welcome to some Quest Pirate Warrior. I think we have a golden opportunity if you want to climb or if you just want to get good at the fundamentals of Hearthstone. I think you should play this deck because it does everything. Like the two golden rules of Hearthstone are remove your opponent's tempo while developing your own and play on curve. And this will directly reward you by doing that because all of your minions are pirates and if you play them efficiently you will complete the quest and you will get like throw bombs at your opponents, you will get weapons, you will eventually get the juggernaut. So I think this is the best deck for practicing your fundamentals. And I just want to throw a blood sail raider. The reason why is because it doesn't curve out. I would much rather get a three drop. I mean provoke kind of sucks to get here, but we might be able to do something with it. Um, I mean, the fire cannoneer is one of those cards that it really carries the deck. So I don't really want to play it like... I don't really want to play it unless I have a weapon. That's a way better 3 drop because we can actually... Maybe... Deal with the trog. And having smite in hand is just kind of nice. Uh, especially when we curve out like this. Um, we are killing this next turn because he's trading. Now we can drop our freebooter and kill this off. Which is really good because... Uh, you don't want this to duplicate, it's just gonna be a nightmare. And next turn we can drop the cannoneer on 4 and get the weapon and then we can start kind of controlling the board. Hopefully this won't be a divine shield because that would be annoying. But if it is, I'm still going cannoneer, yeah. And then we kind of have to hope that our things will land. Actually. So I could go cannoneer here and equip the weapon. 
Or I could go Sword Eater. I could provoke him. And then I could slap it with the weapon. And then trade to get rid of the Divine Shield. But I think maybe going Cannoneer is better. No, actually, actually, I wanna go I wanna go Sword Eater because next turn on turn 5, I wanna play these together. Which is better. Because we're gonna get two ticks of the quest. And that was uh, what I was talking about, playing on curve. It rewards you so much. And we could provoke this. I kinda like it. Because it's not gonna die. And then we take this out with the weapon. And the reason why I just wanna pop this Divine Shield instead of going face is because I don't want him to buff something with a divine shield it's just it's just gonna have double value and next turn we drop the cannoneer and we start hitting and cannonballs will start flying and we kind of have this weapon as a backup which I like but I mean if light forged carriel comes down we have to be careful okay we can kill this just straight up which is nice uh, we could go for the scamp. I don't think we're gonna draw anything better. Okay. Actually, I shouldn't have played the scamp. Because now we're gonna deal two cannonball damages. And I don't really like it. But let's play it and see where they land. I should have played the cannoneer... F I, I don't think it's gonna matter, right? The cannonballs will be flying no matter what. Hit face, I guess? Oh, I don't like that. Okay. We take this with the face and hope that one cannonball lands here. Good. Okay, that worked out. And we are kind of getting into board clear territory from him. If I could get Rukara out before turn 7, that would be good. Because I have a feeling that this card that he kept from turn 1 might be a um, carryo. And that wouldn't be very good. Okay, we can still curve out and we can curve out in the best way possible. We can go Sword Eater and now we can go Blood Sail Raider and now we have Rokara which is super good because Rokara together with a Smite is good but it's a little bit dangerous against a Paladin. I'm still trading with the weapon. I don't care if I go low. I just want to maintain my tempo while removing his. I want to develop my own while removing his tempo. That's the way. Um... What we really want to see next turn... Huh. Never leave a buff target. So what we want to see next turn is just any 2-drop. Like a Fog Sail Freebooter. That would be good. Man, I was so concerned about the Divine Shields first. I mean, he could wipe my board. I'm fine with it. And since he didn't have this since turn 0, I think we're going to be good. So, what I actually really want to do is get this Cannoneer online. But it's way better to just get the Juggernaut here. Let's see, Smite. I can't play Smite and Cannoneer next turn. But it's so important to get Rukara out that I'm just going to take it here. And let's see. I kind of want to start going face here. Um... His hand is so small. Let's see. Yeah, I don't want to throw things into this when it dies. I think that he might clear everything I have next turn. But I don't care, I'm just going for it. I'm gonna see if I can finish him with a smite next turn. That's why. Like, this would just be a divine shield and if I wanted to clear all the minions... I would have to like commit everything on my board and that would be like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now we wish that we had Viper, right? I think, I wonder if he's gonna take this, like trade like this and then with the shield. And if we're really lucky, can we pull it off? I mean, we're not that far from it, right? See where the bombs land and what weapon we get. It's a pretty good one. And let's see, we have... This doesn't curve out yet. We have 3, 6, that's 3 damage. This is another 3, so we have 6. Uh, it's not quite there.
Hmm. Let's get a beefy boy on board. Yeah, we can do it like this. Let's draw a card. Okay. <laughs> that was a concession. I really wanted to drop the smite. But it was just like a little too far, far from winning. So I was taking it, going for it on the next turn. All right, on to the next game. All right. Do you guys think that this is a real life druid? I think it is. He has the golden hero power. I feel like this is a druid. I feel like we're doing good against druids. Uh, Bloodsail Raider isn't nearly as good as the Harbor Scamp. Oh. Interesting. Being on turn 2 is definitely way more interesting with this deck because there's more you can do. Like, you could go quest, you could coin the Bloodsail deck hand, and then play a 2 on 2. And if you get a Defias Cannoneer, I think we gotta. I'm gonna do what I was talking about. So I just wanna go raid the docks. And let's just get on board as early as possible because we know what our plays are gonna be. So next turn we go Harbor Scamp, we get a quest tick, and on turn 3. We're playing the Defias Cannoneer, and the reason why it's good is because we got a polar weapon uh, from the quest deck, and since we played this, our weapon will be free. So we can just go for a huge turn on turn 3. Like, the Defias Cannoneer is way too good to be a 3-drop, uh, but it kind of, you kind of need some setup for it to be good, and this works out very well. Okay, draw me something big. Okay, more draw. Actually getting these um, low curve cards are pretty good, but I would really like to see another deck hand because on turn four, I think we're gonna float a mana and I really don't like that. On turn five, we play like the scamp together with a freebooter. I mean, I could draw like a, oh, that's the Stormwind freebooter. I could, I wanna draw like a Fogsail freebooter or a Bloodsail Raider. Next turn, uh, just to curve out on turn 4 with like a scamp and a 2 drop, right? And then on turn 5, I want to get another 2 drop. There are so, oh, just so many 2 drops. I just want to curve out. <laughs> uh, so I guess I kind of didn't have to coin this. Like that would kind of patch up my... Not coining this would kind of patch up my curve. But I still think this is good. Like we get to push a little damage and this is like a greedy druid. So every damage really matters. And just getting this out is so good. Honorable kill. That's bothersome. Let's hope that we get it. Like if both of these go face, I'm gonna be so sad. He discovered that from resizing pouch. Yeah. Oh man. Don't be too bloodthirsty and go face now. One here. Come on. Oh good. Woo! And yeah, this is like an incredibly powerful start. He probably can do something about it now, like a Lunar Eclipse or something. But just kind of, yeah. Just kind of taking the chance of getting this is way worth it. And this like, if he wants to explode on the board, he's gonna have one less Umbral Owl now, which is really good for me. Um, we hit here first, see where the buff lands. And the question is, do we want to start... I think it's better to draw here. No, I mean, I'm gonna have to play off curve. Let's see, if I play this now, I might just... Then I might not be able to play two next turn. So it's better to play a three drop right now. Even though I'm not getting uh, the attack power from this. I could play this though. Let's do that since I kind of want to get some value still out of these. It can come down to some extra face damage. So what I was thinking there was like, I could go for draw, which could have worked out really well. But then I would just play one pirate this turn if I whiffed. And then next turn I could just play one pirate again. So I would rather play two pirates next turn to get that quest tick. Okay, so it, it kind of... I kind of got lucky now. Let's get the weapon. And let's hit right away to see if this lands on the freebooter. 
And this is just a ton of damage. I don't think that uh, this will get buffed um, if I play this. I don't, I'm, I don't think they work together uh, because I've tried it a long time ago. Man, this guy is getting low, but we have to be like, what? He's going to go armor. Oh, he gets both. So yeah, it's never over against a druid. You have to push them to the limits, right? He's looking for a lightning bloom. So I think we can assume that it's another like solar together with the uh, get a bunch of eights. Okay, this worked out super well. So we just play the deckhand here. Uh, we want to hit first. See if it lands on the deckhand. It did. And now we play Rokara. Because this is just infinite value. Alright, Rokara comes down. Like, just a 7-7 seven, seven for 5 is good. A 7-7 seven, seven with the Juggernaut. It's insane. It's insane. But yeah, I think he's gonna do one last stand here. Try to get a bunch of armor or something. Like, he hasn't ramped. Like, now he soft ramps. Ah, oh, he got that from resizing. Okay, scenario ward. And we don't have to worry about this. It's gonna shoot this, I think. Yeah. We still need to think. Like, we didn't just win. But we're really close to it. Three, four. This works out, right? Let's just go for it. Do we want to leave one space open? That's the question. No, he only has two cards. Just go for the big one. Look at this. And we deal two damage next turn. Like, the chances of him having a combo is really bad now. I guess Wild Heart Guff would be pretty good for him. Like, all the Druid lists are so similar, but they're like really different as well. So, I never know which Druid I'm playing, I guess. I have no clue. There we go. <laughs> That's it. Super easy. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Alright, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you soon. Peace.